Recording in Hi progress. everyone, welcome back to the third episode of our podcast on diversity and equality. I'm again here with my friends, Nafita and Rafael. And today we have a very special guest with us, uh, Felti, who, is, who works in the international office of our university and helps a lot of us and almost all the international students who are coming to our university and who, like us, who have already arrived here. Uh, so Verdi, why don't you give a very small introduction of yourself and tell me how did you arrive here? How did you know about this university? Yeah, hi. Just welcome to everybody. As you, as she said before, my name is Verity, and I work in the international office. So I came actually to Iceland 22 <laughs> years ago, I think. Now. <laughs> I came here as an exchange student actually to the other university, which is the University of Iceland. We can see it from our campus across the highway. And so, yeah, I just came here originally for six months, fell in love with the country, didn't leave, did the falling in love with an Icelander. (laughs) Classic. (laughs) And actually, I still see quite a lot of students from that original group around in Iceland with children and families here. So, So, yeah, I ended up staying on. I had children and was really interested just in working in international education and helping people like myself who came here so I was in a bar one night with a good friend of mine telling him how much I wanted to work at the university but back then it was quite difficult as a non-Icelander non-Icelandic speaking to go to get jobs in universities it's very different now so he said to me go and do your master's degree at Reykjavik University in business they have an internship and demand that you do the internship in the university So that's basically what I did. And he said to me, you'll get a job at the end of that. (laughs) So that's what I did. I came, came to the internship. I went to the international office and marketing. And I said, I really think we need somebody working specifically on international admissions, which they didn't really have at that time. So they kind of created a role for me during, for my internship. And then I just worked and worked and worked for those three months. And at the end of it, they created the role full-time and I was offered the full-time job working in international missions, international marketing and now also I take care of the exchange students as well. So yeah, that was my kind of story in two minutes. (laughs) (laughs) It's uh, really interesting. I mean, the three of us are from different countries and we know the university is getting more and more international students from different continent cities uh, and also for different programs uh, since um, students for undergrad to PhD students. Yeah. How would you describe like the, the role of the international office in helping the students, uh, providing support, answering their questions? Yeah, so I mean, the first kind of stage that I'm involved in is getting their applications, you know, helping them with the application process, telling them about our programs, and then sort of moving them through until they're accepted. And then after that, I sort of take them under my wing. <laughs> like, I'm providing practical information, money about living here, you know, how to get the visas, all, that, all those kinds of things. We've just recently started now offering these Zoom live sessions before students come so they can, I'm offering probably two a month where they can drop in, ask questions about visas, practical information, all those kind of things. And then, so yeah, we just, Basically, the, my aim is to get them here alive and that they have a roof over their heads. <laughs> and I'm pretty pleased when that happens. And yeah, and then we welcome them during our two-day orientation program. And they will also be placed in, I don't know if you guys experience this because you're all PhD, but we have run mentor groups. Yeah, that wasn't us. It's just no, like it's, Yeah, master's. but it's for the full-time masters and exchange mm-hmm. students. We have mentor groups. So we kind of get two volunteer local students to take a group of around 20 students under their wing and they do activities with them, lead them during orientation and sort of help them before they come as well with those questions the students don't really want to ask me. (laughs) So, yeah, that's the kind of the main role of the international office. It's basically a lot of providing students with information and assistance. We help them a lot with housing. We have now the campus housing. I don't know if you've been showing that. or So some students go there, but we help with the private market. We're looking into landlords for them, making sure everything's legitimate. So we try to do as much as we can. We have had students sleep on our sofas before, <laughs> so a few years ago. <laughs> so, I mean, we're a small university. We know everybody and, you know, 
we try to give personal help to everybody. So, and yeah. Just, just to get an idea, um, do you know how many, I mean, what's the proportion of Icelanders and non Icelanders students at, uh, at um, Reykjavik University right now? Just, I mean, just uh, not something I exactly. Don't, true, oh, I wish I should have looked that up an before I got online. I think we're around 5,000 students in the university. Including PhD and postdoc, I guess around 300, I would say, international mm. people. It could be more. In fact, it will be more because I have around 250 students on campus full time in exchange at the moment. So mm -hmm. it might be up near around four or 500. Yeah, so And it's, it's increased a lot. When I yeah. first came to the university in 2012, we were getting exchange students, but we weren't really getting many full time students. Mm -hmm. And not very many international PhDs. There weren't many, or postdocs. That's really expanded in the last sort of five years, I would say. Mm -hmm. I think interest in coming to Iceland has really sort of grown these last years. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, that's a strong is, number. Is the, is the work in the international office uh, focused only in the international students, or can also the international? Uh, teachers or professors, can they access to, to that support? Uh, they're taken care of by the human resources. So they're the so the, the human resources kind of take care of the international. But we have in the past run a few events for international staff at Reykjavik University. So the international office has tried to do a few things like that to integrate international people. Well, actually not to integrate them, but so they can get to know the other international people working on campus. Because I, I do think... I think one thing people find hard when they move to Iceland, at least I found it, is it can be difficult to meet Icelandic people. Mm -hmm. They are super warm and welcoming people if you're introduced to them and you get to know them through other people. But, you know, people they in Reykjavik, they've been here, since, you know, they were born here. They've always had the same set of friends and grown up through that. So I think when particularly like staff come to Iceland, they find it a bit difficult to latch onto friendship groups in Iceland. So that's why we've been sort of doing these events for international staff. But I think Icelanders, once you're sort of introduced to them, they can, they're very welcoming and, and mm -hmm. friendly people. Maybe you guys have some thoughts on that. Or... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. But there is also the, I mean, there's also the problem of the, the language, you know, so basically, I mean, they, I, okay, Icelanders are very, I mean, are very um, uh, welcoming, let's say, I don't know if it's an English word, but, um, but the thing is that as long as you don't speak Iceland, Icelandic, you're not exactly part of the group, you know. You can be a, yeah. you can be a friend, but I mean, that's a little bit different. That's uh, but that's the same everywhere. The only thing is that uh, every I mean everywhere in the world we speak English. So if if uh, someone moved to England or Scotland or, or yeah. any uh, English talking place, then it I mean he will not have this problem. But here in Iceland, yeah. that's not a very very common language. Let's say so. Um, yeah, we we have this problem. And so is there any um, I mean uh, is the international office providing any help for this language barrier basically no we haven't we no we don't teach icelandic at the university which we have tried to mm -hmm. push for but i think the the rector's always seen that the university is so bilingual and that iceland yeah. is so bilingual place and for like exchange students you know people who short term six months two years yeah, that's right they haven't really needed to sort of learn icelandic because mm -hmm. everybody does speak good english here But yeah, I'm, I'm, there's a lot of sort of institutions around the city where you can learn Icelandic. The University of Iceland have a free online mm -hmm, language right. learning site. There's also the Red Cross offers, I think, speaking practice in Icelandic, if I'm right. So yeah, but yeah, that's something I would like to work on because I know some students are coming and, and planning to live here mm -hmm. and they would like to learn the language. We didn't really see that. 10 years ago you know people came on exchange or for master studies two years and off they go yeah, you know so yeah. but yeah. now it's changing people are starting to settle here the Icelandic industries are opening up to internationals working there so there is mm -hmm. I would say more of a need now but of course think, everybody yeah. is very bilingual here <laughs> yeah that's yes right. that's for sure but I think there are more PhD students coming now like I can say from my experience when I came in 2019 there are few of us in yeah. the department and now I think we are 26 or 27. 
Are you? Wow. Okay. Yes. I didn't know that. <laughs> and it's like from all over the world. And it's amazing that when you walk into like our department and you see people from all over the world and it's fantastic to work with them, talk with them, have a conversation, you know, exchange um, words of culture. It's fantastic. And I think. Oh, great. I'll have to come up. You. I'm going to come drop do. by Please and see do. you guys. And we can help. We could facilitate you guys in having a get together and, you know, yes. so you can meet each other. That's part of our role. Yeah. We're, we're the fun people of the, the university. <laughs> so, talking about fun, also, um, how, how would you prepare or um, I would say prepare the incoming students about the weather of Iceland? Because it's quite extreme and also quite unique in the sense. So how would you prepare the I lie to them. No, I don't like them. (laughs) (laughs) Tell them it's wonderful. (laughs) I warn them. I think, I mean, a lot of people, if they're coming here, they're not coming for the weather. I can tell you that. I mean, I send them packing lists as well. I'm like, guys, you need to think carefully about what you need to wear. You need like windproof, rainproof, snowproof, thermal, all of these things. Also in the pre-arrival practical information sessions I kind of go over this about how it can be difficult especially in the winter when we get into all this darkness mm-hmm. yeah so in the winter it's maybe like what four hours of daylight a day something like that and yeah. that can can be hard on some people but I, you know what I always tell them is like the weather in Iceland is an experience mm-hmm. and the Icelanders have a saying there's no such thing as bad weather just bad clothing <laughs> which I think if you take that attitude and I tell the students just you know get the right clothing on go outside every day you know it's not many places in the world you can stand in the wind and it holds you up or you know it can can be (laughs) exhilarating (laughs) and you 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 know is you learn a lot about yourself getting yourself to go out in this kind of weather and push your push your boundaries and get out of your box and so I see the weather as just it's character building (laughs) (laughs) I try to express that to them (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, I think I know like we had some students from Africa that came two years ago and they came in August and it was probably the hottest day of the year. They were freezing. <laughs> they had like thick jackets on hats, like all the winter clothing they brought with them they had on in the middle of August on our warmest day. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> December is going to be different. I can say I know how they how they feel. <laughs> it's the same for me. <laughs> And and on this was on the orientation day, and we were taking the students to swim in the ocean. You know, at, at the back of the university, we have this geothermal beach with the ocean next to it. And the challenge was to jump in the ocean and then go into the hot tub. And they looked at me just like <laughs> it was crazy. They did not go in. <laughs> they were just wondering, uh, like, are they joking? Should we really do it? <laughs> yes, they were looking at me like, why would I Is do that? Is that some sort of prank they're doing? <laughs> <laughs> But a lot of the students went in. It's fun. It's yeah, Iceland is kind of really, yeah. It's an extreme place. I think you could say that. It's extreme temperatures, you know, all kinds of volcanoes going off. You know, last, last year in the spring, the exchange students that came over, you know, it was in the middle of COVID. So we thought things mm-hmm. weren't going to be very exciting, but we had 50,000 earthquakes <laughs> and a volcano go off. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, where on earth did you find that? <laughs> Fun. We all here for the volcano. Yeah, uh, I went there thrice. Yeah, you did. Okay, great. Did, uh, twice, yeah. yeah, definitely. It was amazing, amazing experience. So, yeah. Yeah, but um, working working in the office, um, did you ever find yourself in a difficult situation, or have you ever experienced any? issues uh, with your work environment or with the coming international students that would you like to share? Yeah, I mean, we always have, of course, students are coming from many different cultures and continents from around the world. I'm, I, one case I can think of, we had some students from the Middle East and they were studying in, in the computer science department and I thought they were happy, you know, <laughs> they weren't complaining. And, and then one day they kind of came to me and they had all these problems with their class. They didn't understand. They didn't, you know, they couldn't do the work. And I just said to them, haven't you, you know, you need to talk to your professor and tell them that you don't understand the content of the lecture. Or, And they just looked at me like, 
because we're there from if you tell a professor that you don't understand the content of the you are insulting the lecturer yeah, yeah. so they so they just don't say anything they were sitting there and icelandic teachers aren't used to that because we're a very open culture here you know students here complain <laughs> like just <laughs> So that that can be a problem, like students coming from sort of not, I'm not going to say non-open cultures, but cultures where you can't sort of come forward to the university with your problems. You can sometimes have them here for six months and not realizing that they're really, really struggling because mm -hmm. they don't come to you with these kind of issues. So it's, yeah, so we I had to sit with them and discuss about how things are in Iceland and how our education system works and that teachers are very approachable. I mean, we call them by the first name here. Yeah. I in Iceland, everybody's first name basis. So it's, but it, yeah, it, it was definitely a, um, interesting. <laughs> like to this. And then of course we've had, we have had some students who've had issues sort of adjusting to the, uh, how can I say it? Like the kind of the different cultural expectations in Iceland. But see, I mean, I was talking to Shalini, Shalini isn't it yes. correct? Earlier about expectations of women, how they expect to be treated by men. In Iceland, the women are very strong minded. And, and there's a lot, Iceland is one of the most equal places in the world. So there are certain expectations about how men are going to talk to women. And we've had students from other continents that have kind of, come from places where it's very different to this and this has caused a kind of clash and you know we've had complaints from Icelandic women and yeah these students are kind of doing what they're used to in their own country so it can be difficult for, for me because in my western eyes I see this as a type of behavior I can't accept but for them it's a behavior that is acceptable in their own culture so it always is this kind of storming norming and what is it called storming and norming <laughs> like mm. you have this when students first, sure. <laughs> but when they first come mm. they have this phase where it's just you know trying to get used to this new culture and so i think we're trying now to work a bit more and helping students with understanding just the cultural life in iceland and mm -hmm. expectations of behavior between fellow students across the genders those kinds of things so yeah did that make sense it does. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's, not, that's not an easy task to, I mean, to take into account, to take into consideration all the different cultures. Um, um, I mean, and so especially in your example, so, so the, these people were from different cultures, but it's very hard to, I mean, in a sense to, it's very hard to see that they are struggling with that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's, yeah, because they don't come forward yeah. with it. So, you know, and it wasn't until I just saw them one day and they all looked miserable and I just went and sat and talked to them that they finally came, you know, talked to me about what was going on. But they were just mortified that they should speak to their teacher about this. Yeah. Because it's just an insult to the professor. I was just like, so now having had that experience now before the students come, I actually just do a kind of a talk about learning culture in Iceland and how teachers you know expect students to behave and you know how but i don't know if it's it's still probably difficult for them to come forward to professors but we do try to address this with students now that's the thing it's a lot of learning curves going on and now we're opening up to students from continents all around the world we're learning <laughs> a lot quickly <laughs> but even i mean it's not the same um, i mean it's not as uh, as serious as in your example but even for everyone for anyone i mean around the in the around the globe it's the culture in Iceland is very different. I mean, it's very informal. So even from people from uh, Europe, so basically when I arrived, I was quite surprised to see that it was very informal. We, we, I mean, we are very friendly with the teachers. Uh, yeah. Even in Europe, it's not like that. But I mean, I mean, uh, it's I mean for for I mean for me uh, since I mean the, diff the cultural difference is not so big, it was not very yeah. hard to adapt myself. But I expect that for people from very very different culture, it can be very very strange. Very yeah, very. And, uh, I mean, even coming yeah. from the UK, I found it bizarre that the teachers knew who I was here. Like when I was studying at the yeah. university, <laughs> and like and and my friends were like just like catching them in the hallway to ask questions. Like in the UK, that would be seen as rude to approach a professor. Mm -hmm in the hallway and just you know hound them down but here they're really open to it you know first name basis i mean even the president of the university you can knock on her door and go and have a chat i mean the president of the country yeah. do that. 
<laughs> so yeah, it's a very informal, informal culture. Definitely. Um, I have uh, one question. So I was having this discussion with other students from other universities uh, of Iceland, and we were talking that um, if something uh, like a student, if he or she or they have a complaint, where should they go? Like, should a university have some sort of department or sector that the students can go and complain about certain stuff, like, you know, critical issues, um, uh, say sexual violence or digital violence, digital bullying. So does yeah. the international office offers this kind of service? It's not us. There's an ethics committee okay. that deals with these matters and you bring them to the ethics committee mm -hmm. and they are a kind of non-biased sort of collection of people who can take on complaints from students if it's towards teachers if it's towards fellow students that kind of thing so the ethics committee takes these complaints and they the ones that move forward I was just trying to find about it on our website mm. sorry I need to no. ethics committee yeah Okay, there's not huge amounts of information on it. It's the trouble in English, but but there is a committee, and there's a committee member for each department, and students can come forward about professors or other other students to mm. to deal with these issues. Okay, that's that's very good to know. Yeah, I have no more questions from my side, but Lupita, Rafael, if you wanted to ask. Because I'm really enjoying the conversation. I yeah. wanted to end. <laughs> There's also one thing I just wanted to add in, you know, when we were talking about this informal culture yeah. in Iceland. What I think it is, it's because it's an egalitarian society. There is no classes in Iceland. And I think that's what a lot of students really like when they come here. There is no upper class in Iceland. Everybody sees each other on the same level you know nobody sees themselves above anybody else so i think that's what leads into this kind of informal culture that you you experience when you're here because everybody's an equal nobody's non-approachable so yeah mm -hmm. just wanted to <laughs> like, yeah i mean iceland is just a huge family let's say yeah uh, it's a it's a i mean there is not a lot of people uh here so everyone is I mean, everyone knows everyone, basically. And so yeah, I think and that's probably why it's so egalitarian in a sense. I mean, there yeah, is no every, classes the because kids... there is not enough people to have several huge classes, let's say. <laughs> let's put it this and way. I mean, there's no private schools here, you know. Mm -hmm. Children all yeah. get the same education here. I mean, kids are pretty much born equal in Iceland. If we compare it to places like the UK, you know, everybody has pretty much the same equal access to opportunities. If you start from the very beginning, it's easier to build a society. Yeah. It's not yeah. You don't start differentiating from one year old, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like they do in the UK. <laughs> do you have any? Yeah. Sorry? So I don't have any more questions, but so Rafael and Lupita. Just to summarize, um, um, could you give us a list of all possible resources for international students that I mean, you can provide to, uh, for them, to them? Like a list of links or? Yeah. Would you like me just to provide that to you sort of afterwards? Yeah. Because so the I, thing is I have- For examples, like, uh, like for example, so you talked about, um, so the renting, I mean the, the yeah, the, I mean the real estate, let's say, uh, problems. Uh, but is there some something else uh, you can point out? Yeah, oh, you mean just to discuss now? Or, yeah. Yeah, a few, few. I mean, few things, a uh, few different things you can do for uh, for a student. I mean, international students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this, what I do because I've recently changed how where all my resources are and stuff. And in the university, we use a school management system called Canvas, like a learning system. Mm -hmm. So actually, I use Canvas now for international students. There's a there's a module I run <laughs> that I just you know send them the link to, and they mm -hmm. they have everything in there like cost of living, which can that's one thing. Cost of living is can be quite a shock for some students coming here. Is <laughs> yeah, 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 probably yeah. probably the most expensive country in the world, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. at least in Europe. There is Switzerland. It's quite expensive as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Switzerland is also on a par with Iceland. 
Also, a lot of students, I have links to things about working in Iceland. That's something a lot of students mm-hmm. do when they come here is they tend to get a part-time job. There's a yeah. big culture of students working in Iceland. So it's before COVID, it was very easy for students to get set, to get part-time work. You know, there's what two million tourists coming here a year. So language is not an issue with finding work. They're looking for, you know, English speakers and other languages. <laughs> Trying to think what else I provide. I mean, I get, I have links to everything, you know, in this course about getting cell phones when you're here, public transportation in Iceland, getting around Reykjavik. Most students are traveling around by bus or on the hop scooters now. That seems to be quite popular. But yeah, I kind of have it all together in one course and with lots of links. And, and then I run lots of sessions, you know, every month for students to drop in and ask questions about living here. That's fantastic. So I think if anyone wants to come here and join this amazing work environment, you just have to apply and then you'll meet Verdi and everything yeah. is smooth there. <laughs> they get enough, they get enough from me. On, <laughs> yeah, from there on, you, you don't need anyone else. No, I'm so, <laughs> yeah. I think by the time they get here, they get enough of me. I've sent them so many emails. <laughs> they just leave me alone. <laughs> But yeah, we try, we try to welcome everyone. I think we are like a bit of a family on campus and, you know, the students are my babies. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I look after them. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. And thank you. Thank you so much, Verdi, for today. I had a lovely conversation and I am sure that people who want to come here, they will find this uh, episode very helpful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It was enjoyable to chat with you all. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Rafael and Lupita. It was nice again, and we will see everyone, or at least the two of you, tomorrow on our fourth episode. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you so much again. Bye-bye. Bye.